wisdom. This is the podcast that delves deep into the inner psyche of mountain bikers from all walks of life in order to discover the tools and the tactics that can help us have more fun out on the trails more often. Our aim here is to help you understand what it takes to push our own personal boundaries in the sport we love from a mental and emotional perspective. On today's episode, which is part one of two, we decided to have some fun and mix things up a little bit. So we headed over to the BC Bike Show down in Vancouver to record a Voice of the People episode. The goal of this was to gain a broader insight into the mindset of a whole bunch of mountain bikers from all over Canada. So listen in as we ask riders for their perspective on a bunch of commonly debated topics like are warm-up laps necessary? What are people's mental techniques for overcoming fear and doubt on the bike? How many bikes is too many? And what are people's stance on calling the last lap of the day? So listen in as we dive into these topics, plus a few more bonus questions I added in there. Enjoy. What's your attitude towards warm-up laps when you go right in? The warm-up laps. I just go, uh, the faster the better. I would say uh, don't do anything too fast. Oh, warm-up laps, pretty essential part of things, right? So like, I like to do stretching and get warm before I get bodied on the ground, right? Easy and slow. Uh, warm-up laps, I believe, is very important. Oh, warm-up laps are very needed. I feel like warm-up laps also can tell you like how the session is going to go. When I'm riding, wherever I'm getting to is usually the warm-up. If I'm riding Whistler, I mean, I love to do like one or two before I get hit A-line or something like that. The warm-up laps is usually when, uh, you know, I know that the bike is good, so the bike is set up, and I'm just trying to gradually increase that level to where I'm comfortable doing some bigger stuff that I'm capable of. I do a lot of stretching, a lot of yoga and stuff. So, you know, I limber up and do a little stretching ahead of time. Uh, but warm up laps are key. Like, you get, you, if you're not warm, what, what's the point? Yeah, so I just like to kind of get into the groove, um, do the tricks that I know I can do like every time, first try for sure. So, it's do like 360s, flips, um, some of my fun tricks I like to do. And that just kind of builds your confidence where the day goes on and also gets the muscles warmed up. <laughs> do you have any tips for overcoming fear or doubt on the bike? Less thinking, more doing. Um, I would suggest just go for it. <laughs> Most of the time, it's great to just follow someone someone in. Um, oh, yeah, man. I have to go through that process like every day. So I break it down for myself as best I can. So I just kind of get into the routine of things. Because with repetition, you get better. And so my routine, of the, say like on that double flip, right at the end, I was shit in my pants. You can ride at Sand Air. We have airbags. Honestly, just don't think of it. Like, it's the, the most cliche thing to say, but like... Well, the one thing I've learned with mountain biking is the faster you ride something, the easier it is. And I find when I'm scared of stuff, I ride a lot slower and uh, I'm not balanced. So I try and just pick that point of no return on a feature, ride into it and like realize that there is a mind-body separation for mountain biking. Yeah, really good insurance. That peace of mind, and then I send it. I love it. The uh, the fear of failing um, increases your chances of failing to begin with in the first place anyway, right? So if you believe you're going to do something, odds are you're going to do it. I've kind of figured out that there's like a five-second window where you either commit or you don't commit. You kind of just have to give your balls a tug and go for it. I find it's just there's a certain like kind of like mental state I get into um, that's very meditative. Well, I used North Shore Betty's uh, tip that she gave at uh, the library, North Shore, or the, the North Van Library, where she said, if you're not feeling it, don't do it. Um, besides pre-drinking? Pre-drinking, okay. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, you know, uh, the biggest doubt for me, obviously, is, is always uh, declines. And sometimes when I'm not sure about the decline, I'll hold back, dial it back, take her easy. You kind of got to use like a bit of logic. So if you go into something and you've done it's like airbag or the foam pit like 10 times and say you've landed nine of those 10 times in the airbag or foam pit, you go, okay, what happened on the one I didn't land? And say, okay, just like slip the pedal. So how bad can I get hurt if I slip the pedal on like an actual landing? And then most times you'll find the answers in your head aren't actually as bad as your fear might be telling you. See so if you want to- What's your number one tip for staying focused during a ride? Just being really aware of everything you're doing, being aware of the conditions around you, the way your bike is set up, and then how you're being influenced by people around you. I'd say don't actually try. You like gotta, it like kind of comes to you. Don't sound ridiculous, 
Do you have like a song you can sing to yourself in your head? You know, there's music. Yeah. You know, I got some uh, retro uh, tunes. I've been listening to Nirvana recently. I love it. Yeah. Yeah, some good tunes to, to yeah. keep the energy up. Yeah. Well, you just practice quite a lot. You just like write everywhere, so like, you're, you're sort of getting getting used to it with your muscle memory. Fan focused. It's a lot of water. Um, I guess breathing. Really trying to be intentional about like why I'm doing it. Listen to music and you can block everything out. Uh, some Pink Floyd always always keeps you relaxed. It's easy to send. You just gotta love what you do. Like you have to enjoy biking. You don't have to push your limits and you don't have to race for some, I don't know, medals and stuff. Think about two things that you're focusing on. This one ride. Uh, just uh, having a good sleep, just being well rested before riding. I think it's very important, you know. Yeah, man, I love it. That's some wisdom right there. Yeah. Um, What's your stance on calling the last lap? Goofy, for sure. When you're out there riding with your buddies, do you ever call the last lap? Uh, no, no. <laughs> we never call last lap. Always second last lap. That one more run always gets you, so I always say two more runs. Second last lap, skip the last, because you never want to get hurt on the last lap. Knowing in your head that it's probably going to be the last one. Okay, yeah, so you kind of know it internally, but you won't voice it. You're not, yeah, it's superstition, right? Yeah, like, it's, it's you're totally. Not to call it. was... Never say it. Two more, skip the last. Last lap of the day? Uh, I love it. Yeah, by the end of the ride, I love to be completely dead, so I don't want to ride at all. Don't do it. Never call last lap. Don't do it. <laughs> I love it. Do you have any riding mottos or mantras? Ride more, work less? I like that one. Don't look at the tree if you don't want to hit it. Yeah. The next lap is the best lap. If you don't feel it, go home. I just say pull back and pray. Not really, no. Uh, send it. Yeah, don't think, don't think, just go, and it works. It's always smarter to walk the future before you just hit it. There's no more. How important for you is positive self-talk when you're out there on a ride of your own? I think positive self-talk is super important. I always tell myself, so, slow is smooth and smooth is fast. It's all about positivity. Yeah, I think uh, what well, they say, like ment mentality is everything, right? Like the, it's the key to everything. So without your mind, like your body's kind of useless, right? So if you tell yourself you are or you can do something, your body's going to like do it for you. Yeah, oh, it's very important, yeah. Yeah, just to stay positive and to uh, picture a lot of the tricks you're doing. Uh, I'll pretty much always say, like, you can do it to myself. Oh, I think that's like the the most important part of progression positive like you need a lot of positive self-talk yeah oh man that's 200 percent oh yeah very important um i struggle with that a lot i'm very much of a, a pessimist and a negative negative thought kind of person um so it's something i'm constantly trying to do and and amp myself up and like be okay with failure and be okay with like not beating that goal every single time i i don't really do that i just go <laughs> oh i talk to myself all the time just having a positive mindset that you're here to have fun is what's going to get you places. If you're not having fun, you're not riding. I think it's pretty important. Like, I feel like when you ride in a group, that is, like, really boosted because you're, like, so many people and everyone's hype. But when I'm riding alone, it's not. It, like, I'm not very good at hyping myself up. So I feel like it's, it's pretty important, and I should totally do it more. Extremely positive. Keeps your hands off the brakes, and you just keep encouraging yourself to keep going. Totally. What's your favorite post-ride beer preference? Probably my favorite is one of the backcountry brewing IPAs. Oh, that's a good one. There's a new Pilsner out from Hoyne that I find delicious, so. I gotta say it's actually a cider. <laughs> so, no, which one? Uh, the Okanagan Cider. Um, so I've been really into like good pale ales. I don't drink. <laughs> coffee? Uh, I drink coffee, but yeah, no, I... I like to drink water. Got a bonus question. Okay. Um, when it comes to bike ownership, how many bikes is too many? So I'm going to say three's, three's good, or maybe four. Four. I think seven is a good uh, number, right? One for each day. I love it, man. Great answer. Never. N plus one. Yeah. All the time. Yeah. There is no such term as too many. There is never too many bikes. I'd say for one person, like four bikes. Or no, like seven. Seven bikes. That's a better number. Man, thanks so much. Uh, there's never too many. There's never too many. Never too never many. Too, there's never too many. <laughs> Maybe like ten? Six. There is no limit. Well, you, you can never have enough bikes. There's really never too many bikes. My dream is probably to have a big garage where I have a full wall of different bikes of each style. Do you like biking? Then there's no bikes are too many. How many <laughs> different features are there? How do you go? You got road bike, gravel bike, mountain bike, <laughs> enduro bike, downhill bike, e-bike. 
Gee, there's a folding bike over there. Now you I'm limited. <laughs> What's up, guys? Just one last thing before you hit the trails. If you enjoyed this podcast, please be sure to subscribe and don't be a stranger. I'd love to hear from you about any topics, particular episodes you enjoyed, and even about any guests that you'd like to hear me have on the show in the future. You can find me on Instagram at the underscore mind underscore mountain. This podcast, mountain biking and mindset are all things that are very, very close to my heart. So I feel super grateful to be able to share these conversations with you. Much love to you all for taking the time to listen. See you next time.